Hello, welcome back to Fred in the Shed 1 and another little uh, PMR type radio test today. Now on the last video we looked at this uh, treble AS, this Bofong, incredibly cheap radio, I mean these are about £10 uh, delivered nowadays and we put it up against the uh, T1 and it did quite well. So today we're going to put it up against the treble AS Plus, this, this is supposed to be a step up from the uh, basic treble AS. Now I bought this radio in originally to test against the T1 because it is a similar price, the, these go for typically around about £15 as opposed to £10 for the, the treble AS. Um, I've got to be totally honest with you, I, I like to be honest on my videos, I really was not particularly happy with this uh, with this radio. Why? Well, it looks quite nice, doesn't it? You've got this kind of uh, uh, mock aluminium finish. This is actually all plastic. And uh, it does look a quite a nice, attractive radio. But when it arrived, it had a problem straight away. This function button here, which still isn't 100%, was literally hanging out of the casing. So straight away, I wasn't particularly happy with the, uh, the, the build of that. And then when I sort of got it in my hand, um, Compared to the, you know, the, the treble AS and certainly a UV5R, it just feels so cheap. The finish, this kind of mock cast aluminium finish, um, you know, I, I don't really like. It, it just, to me, it just, it certainly, it does feel cheap. It doesn't look or feel like a 50% increase on the basic treble AS radio at all. Um, again, with the controls, once I sort of started playing with the controls, the volume control, kind of felt very stiff. It kind of starts off quite loose and it has a kind of a, a, a sort of stiff feel and it goes loose again. It's a typical kind of pot that's not been uh, put together pro properly. The 16 point uh, multi switch there for the channels, yeah that's you know that that's okay. But you know I think what they've tried to do with this silver plastic is they've tried to do a, a mock cast aluminium effect and I suppose at a distance it, it does work reasonably well but when you start looking up close it just looks rough it just I don't know it, you put your opinions in the comments you might think it looks absolutely fantastic very rugged um, I was not impressed and the same thing when you get to the buttons here on, on the push to talk with the treble AS there it's all nicely kind of sort of recessed into the radio it has quite a nice tactile feel it works but you know these buttons are very kind of look rubberized, they're just not fitted into the case very well. So because of the uh, problem with the button there, I was going to send it back. Uh, it's very rare I, I would send anything back at this price, but I did contact the buyer and I said, look, I'm really not happy with this. And they came back and they offered me a 25% discount, so it really wasn't worth sending it back time I'd sort of paid the postage. So these are the two radios we're going to compare. As I say, I'm a bit down on this one straight away, but we'll find out when we get to the testing if it's uh, any any better than the standard uh, treble AS. So the differences between them, well, I can't really make out much difference other than the cosmetic appearance. Um, the Plus does have a larger capacity battery. It has a 1900 mAh battery compared to a 1500 mAh battery. Whether that makes any difference in the real world, the sort of uh, AAAS, it, it basically gives you 10 hours, 10 hours standby, which you know is more than enough. I, I, I'm not going to test it. I don't know if that will give you any more. I very much doubt it. But in, internally, the radios pretty much are exactly the same. Uh, the output of these radios both claim about 3 watts. Uh, in testing, on YouTube I've seen tests, people get typically 1.8 to 2 watts. So, you know, I think they'll perform about the same. But one difference that comes out of the box here is, is you'll notice that on the plus there, it does have a very slightly longer antenna, maybe a centimetre and a half, three quarters of an inch. And <laughs> despite what your wife might tell you, three quarters of an inch does make a difference. Um, now, whether that is a genuine sort of length of the antenna, whether that is actually the windings go up to the very end without cutting the top off, I couldn't tell you, or maybe the windings are obviously tuned and trimmed the same and then possibly they've just added a little bit extra plastic just to uh, differentiate the difference between the uh, two rate. I don't know. Well, that is something that uh, you know might come out in the testing. This might just have a slightly better, slightly better range. Um, other things to mention, another thing that I had trouble with, um, I don't know really, you can just sort of see that you know, the battery just doesn't fit as nice as a AAA S and also the belt clip there, one of the screws, one of the threads on the Plus was uh, very slightly misaligned so I, it wouldn't work with the screw that was supplied so I ended up having to source a slightly longer screw. Little tiny things, 
but you know when they're, when they're charging half as much again for this radio um, good thing is is that it has got the Kenwood programming standard sort of cable so you've got the this is this is sort of on all of the uh, Bofang radios other than the UV5R as far as I'm aware bad thing well if you look at the treble s there you know the little rubber flap there comes comes away and you can get to the uh, to the actual ports on this on this one it's a bit tight you can you know again it's a silly little thing but it makes getting the cabling sort of quite difficult because you have to really sort of bend it back and that puts quite a lot of stress on that joint again it's a design thing it's worse i don't know why it should really be better than the uh, than than what it is so with these two radios, obviously these are single band, uh, 400 to 470 megahertz UHF. They're not VHF for, at all. Now, a lot of people watching my videos, you know, you're CB guys, and you're not really into PMR, because I'm only just getting into a little bit of PMR. And of course they say, you know, if I buy this radio, can I, can I use it straight out of the, uh, the box without programming it? And the answer to that is a serious no. These come with a complete random range of frequencies programmed into the radios um, if you start walking around town using those frequencies or trying to use them you're going to probably interfere with other radio services security uh, sort of prop, sort of radios things like that you might even interfere with some emergency services i'm not sure but basically you know you're going to get yourself into into in a little bit, little bit of trouble there if you're not careful so with the uh, programming cable that is supplied um, you can program these in very easily to the, say the eight standard PMR UK channels. I've using Chirp now. Um, each, each radio does come with a little disc, but it's all in Chinese. It's incredibly difficult to try and use. You can go online and you, you can get the uh, the 850. I think it is the 850 programming from uh, Bofeng itself. I'm using Chirp. Um, this was recommended to me by a, a, uh, a viewer and. Chirp, I find, is much, much easier. You can copy and paste the, uh, the, the sort of frequencies in. So, easy, to, very easy to program Chirp, and Chirp works for pretty much all of the, the, the Bofeng, Bofeng range. Right, so I think that's, that's about it. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to go and do some testing. Now, I know someone commented, said, oh, you know, you're only really testing these radios solo, you're only really testing the transmit. Is it possible that you could get maybe a radio friend and you could do a transmit and receive? Um, not possible at the moment. I mean, logistically speaking, it, you know, I can only work on these videos on my day day off work, which is normally a Monday. Um, it's difficult to try and tie that in with someone that can help me do the right videos. Um, in the future, I've got an idea maybe to, to do a sort of a video with another radio guy that I know, and uh, maybe we'll do that in the summer. We, we will have to sort of tie in between you know my day off work and a day that he's not working but yeah might do that in the future but at the moment yes it is going to be unfortunately just we're going to go out from the base and we're going to transmit back to this trusty old uv5r there i will do perhaps a little bit of a, I'll, I'll reverse that i'll do a little bit of a receive test at the end just that we'll test out the speakers on these radios because they are quite a nice sort of size speaker you do get quite a decent receive quality so I will give you a little bit of that. Now when it comes down to the receive tests, we've, uh, we tested this the other week. Very impressed with this. For a £10 radio, um, it's very hard to beat, to be perfectly honest. And uh, we did about a sort of a 400 to 500 metre test from the QTH, and the radio performed very, very well. So that, that will be our starting point. I will go back to that point, and we'll do the 400 metre test. You know, just to test that to make sure this isn't actually a fake radio as well i mean obviously i've got build quality issues um, i did think this may have been a fake radio at one point but i did go online and check a lot of pictures from other people's radios and it does appear to be exactly the same so it'd be interesting to see how it performs so we're going to start at the 400 meter point um, i'll head out towards the flyover I'll do and have a little test just before the flyover, probably around about 600 metres. And then the flyover, which we seem to think is probably around about the sort of 850, 900 metre mark. I mean, I'm only estimating, this is not exact science. Um, but, you know, just, just around about a half mile, just under. The T1 struggled like hell on the flyover. There's a lot of interference, a lot of buildings and everything else. It'd be interesting to see if this does any better. It's got more power than the T1. Um, this one's a slightly longer antenna. Probably not, you know, I'm, I'm not expecting this to do any better, to be honest, at that range. These radios, you know, do not work particularly well in built-up suburban areas. The manufacturer, they uh, claim about anything from half a kilometre to one and a half kilometres, and that depends where you're using these, and I think that's probably pretty fair, to be honest. I think these... 
So I'm out at my first test point. I've come out in the car today to save a little bit of time. And it's quite busy, there's quite a few people about. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a test from this area, which we did. We know this uh, 888S works really well here. And then I'm gonna try and move out to the, uh, the flyover and do that. I think we just do the two. Uh, I think three is unnecessary. So the, obviously the two radios are pretty much the same. So really it's just gonna be audio quality. Um, I don't think it'll be much difference really. But uh, anyway, let's get out and uh, get this treble eight S underway. So here we are, test point one, uh, just by the uh, dual carriageway again. A bit noisy, so we're going to give the uh, treble eight S a go back to the QGH. Yeah, audio test one, audio test one. The treble eight S, treble eight S at the test point one. We think approximately about 500 metres or so from QTH, so audio 1, 2, audio 1, 2. Yeah, audio test 1, audio test 1, the treble AS, treble AS at the test point 1, we think approximately about 500 metres or so from QTH, so audio 1, 2, audio 1, 2. So here we are with the uh, Bofong Plus, the extra 50% in cost. Let's uh, give it a test. Yeah, audio test one, audio test one from test point one, the Treble A S Plus, Treble A S Plus back to the QTH, audio one, two, one, two, one, two, audio. Just a little extra test while I'm at test point one. I might as well uh, just try it in the car. I've never really thought about this, but we're inside the car. Yeah, audio test, audio test of the Bofang, audio test of the Bofang Treble AS, Treble AS in the car, Treble AS testing from the car at test point one. Right here we are, testing point two, the noisy uh, flyover over the dual carriageway. So I'm uh, going to see how they get on these two radios. Now the, uh, the Bofang, the T1, BF T1, it struggled like hell, didn't it, at this range? You couldn't really cue so back to the base from this, uh, from this sort of distance. So I'm hoping these radios do a little bit better with the slightly uh, the sort of more power and also the longer antenna. So uh, anyway, let's give them a go. Okay, so here we are at the uh, test point two, back up on the flyover. T1 struggled from, uh, struggled at this range. Let's give the uh, 88S a go. Yeah, test point two, test point two on the flyover there. Uh, run about half a mile, we think. Yeah, audio test, uh, one, two, one, two, audio. Audio test two on the Bofang Treble AS, the Bofang Treble AS. Right, so with a plus now, with that very slightly longer antenna, if that does anything at all. So let's give this one a go back to the QTH. Yeah, audio test, audio test two on the Bofang, the Bofang Treble Eight S Plus, Treble Eight Plus on the flyover. Audio test two. It's a one two, one two three audio, one two three audio. And just for the hell of it, as we walk back to the car, just give the uh, little bow phone the plus here a bit of a chance. We'll lower down now. So, yeah, final check, final check on the bow phone, the triple eight plus, triple eight plus. As we wander back to the car, audio, 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 one two, one two, audio check back to the QTH. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how we get on with that. Audio, 
audio, audio, one, two, one, two, audio check back to the Q stage. Right, just before I do the conclusion on these radios, because I haven't actually played the clips back yet, um, final test will be a receive test. Now these should be exactly the same. I'm pretty sure if I took these apart, these would have the same speaker built in. So I'm just going to do a quick little test from the UV5R back to each radio and we'll hear what the speaker sounds like. So just an audio test now, my natural speaking voice, transmitting on the UV5R of course, which is the superior radio. So, uh, yeah, audio testing on the AAAS, one, two, one, two, audio, one, two, one, two. So, same test again. Uh, there shouldn't be any difference between these radios. Both have the same uh, speaker, I imagine. So my voice should uh, come out the same. Just need to test them a little bit further next time. Just need to push them right to the end of their range and uh, see how they sound. But anyway, there's my voice. So, uh, one, two, one, two, audio testing. So, there we go. Range test uh, conclusion time. Now, I want to hear your views because obviously my views are subjective. I want to hear what you think if you listen to those two clips of the range tests. Um, first thing, hard to fault the radios, isn't it? Even at the second point now on the flyover, both radios got back to the QTH perfectly adequately. Remember, it's radio to radio. Um, I think, I think that I think the plus had it. To be honest, I hate to admit it, but I think the plus did have a slightly better audio than the treble AS. There wasn't a lot in it, but I do think it was slightly louder. Um, now, the question is, because I imagine they've got the same microphone, is that purely because it has the longer antenna? I don't know. I think when the 771 antenna comes in, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do another series of tests, and I think I need to push these radios a bit far as well, a bit harder, because in fact they both coped with that second distance incredibly well, especially, you know, for a 10 pound radio like this one. Uh, that did much better than the than the T1. So I think there'll be a, probably <laughs> a third video where I want to push these out to their maximum range to see what sort of difference it makes. But on that testing, I hate to say, the Plus to me did sound, sound better. Now, would I choose the Plus over the AAS? Would I pay the extra five pounds? Well, I would do if the build quality was better. To me, you know, the build quality, especially with this problem with the buttons here, you know, the, the 8AS to me is just a much better build quality. Um, I would still choose this, even though it has a slightly thinner audio, it did the same job, I would sort of still uh, still choose this. So, okay, that's about sort of sums it up. There will be a third video when I get the extended 771 antenna and we'll push these to the, uh, to the absolute limits. But I mean, you know, you've got to remember these are so cheap, 10 pounds, you know, 15 pounds, come on. They're working, they're getting back to home to another little handheld radio, perfectly fine if you wanted just to keep in contact with your mates, as I say, at a venue, sort of something like that. All right, that's gonna be it for this video, as always. Cheers, thanks for watching, thanks for sticking with it. Uh, please give the old video a thumbs up if you can, that helps me, that helps the channel. And uh, if you want to see more of these videos, there will be more testing, click that subscribe button and you'll get some uh, notifications when I put up another video. But as for now, as always, big thumbs up from Fred. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next one.